Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is The Word with Joy. Uh, my name is Nimo Wori. God bless. Thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, so last week we started Except the Lord Builds the House and we talked about how the reason why was because um, when he was speaking to Noah as an example, the house was being preserved and protected against the floods of life, right? The things that happen in life and God knowing ahead of time it was going to cause a flood was able to give Noah specific directions about what to do, how to keep it, how to, you know, make it strong enough to withstand the flood that was coming, right? And we talked about um, how Jesus also made like a, a remark about the flood and the rock. And I just want to quickly start from there. But before we go in, we'll pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful to be in your presence again and let your word come alive in us, your spirit. Speak to us, speak to me also, and to those who are hearing that our heart to be receptive to hear what your word is saying, and it will profit us much in Jesus' name. Be glorified, we will be edified, and inspired, encouraged, empowered, and the enemy put to shame concerning our lives and our affairs in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so that was Matthew 7, but I'm going to go to Matthew 16, verse 18. Which says, this is when, um, well, I'll start from 17. When, when he talked to Peter and was asking, who do people say I am? And he was like, oh, you're Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Verse 16. And verse 7, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood did, has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And verse 18. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I, you know, I think people, you know, we don't, we know that it's not. It wasn't saying upon Peter you will build this church because Peter is is also called Cephas, which is the rock. But it wasn't that. He was saying um, upon what the revelation, because the revelation that, that Peter brought was, you know, in verse sixteen, thou art Christ, the Son of the Living God. That revelation right there, Jesus Christ was saying, upon that will I build my church. Remember when we we're talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ? There's no other gospel that's been given for us to be saved, to be delivered, to be healed, to be lifted, to be blessed, to be empowered, to be victorious, to live like more than conquerors, to access the eternal blessings of God for salvation, eternal life. Nothing else has been given. There's no other name that has been given for men to be saved than the name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus was telling Peter, it's like upon that revelation that you have said, which is that I am the son of the living God. I am Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. That is what I'm going to build my church on. And that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The floods that come are not going to prevail against it. Life that happens and all the crazy that's going on or whatever, the pandemic, recession, anything that's come and then thrown into our lives will not prevail against the revelation that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And he's saying that he's building this church on that. So I just wanted to kind of expand it a little bit. It's not necessarily where I'm heading with the rest of the talk, but just to explain why the house that was built on a rock would stood was because the rock was Jesus Christ, the belief in Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ as the son of the living God. All right. Um, so now we're going to go into, well, we know well, if we go back to Genesis Six. Um, another reason why God was building and what, what was the outcome of that was Genesis 6 verse, verse 19 was talking to Noah and he says and of every living thing of all flesh two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee and they shall be male and female so he the key thing was to keep them alive with him because I already said hey you're you are going in and your wife your sons and your son's wives and everybody's children were all going in and the animals into the ark to keep them alive with thee being in the ark was a source of life it was like at that point do you want air do you want to breathe through your nose you need to be in the ark if you want to be alive you need to be in the ark and that is why god had to build that ark well, Noah built it, but God gave him the specifications because he was like, I need, I, I know how many animals are in this whole earth right now. I need two of each one, male and female, so they can procreate, right? I need all of you family members to continue to breed for humans. I also need food. There's going to be food for the humans to eat and food for the animals to eat too, right? There will be a place for, uh, I don't know, going to the bathroom. There will be a place to cook. There will just be all of that and having the comfortable 
sleeping arrangements for everybody. I mean, I don't want to know how that place smells. Okay, like goats and cows and chickens and snakes and scorpions. Everything was there. Everything was there. And yet, in that place, God says, it is when you are in the ark that you have life. He has come to give us life and that more abundantly, right? John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God that we just saw, to bring life, to give life, and to give that more abundantly. So when God is building the ark, when God is building your life, when God is building the situation around you, when God is building your family, your business, your ministry, he's also doing it not just to preserve against and protect against um, the flood, He's also doing it that if you stay in the ark and stay in him, that you have life. If you stay in that place that he has built, that is where life will be. When you go outside of what God built for you, when you go outside of God's will, then it's not like at, at that point, it's pretty much a flood and it's death, right? That's what he's saying. Remember um, Pro, Proverbs 14, Proverbs 14. Actually, you start from verse 11. I was going to 12, but 11. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. Isn't that interesting? That's so cool. But I was actually going to 12. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So the only way that we need to go is the way that, you know, if you are in the ark, right, is to stay in the path of life. And we know that Jesus Christ said in John, John 6, John 6, 63, let me open it. Well, hold on. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. When God builds, his words are spirit and life. Remember that he said, stay in the ark. That's where you're going to be alive. If you stay in there, then you will be alive. You will not be touched. It's kind of like, remember when... um. The Passover with Moses and the children of Israel and um, as long as they stayed in the houses that had the sign of the blood the sprinkled blood that they had the blood on the doorposts and all of that then the evil will pass away. as long as they stayed inside so staying within where God has built for us is very important to stay in his will and I was gonna to type to something else but I feel like the video is gonna to run too long so I'm going to end the video. Hey, it's short today. I'm going to end the video on that note is that life is what God gives us when we stay in, in what he, when we, when he builds, right? When he builds, he brings life. Of course, when he builds in the beginning in Genesis, it was life, life, life. It wasn't anything. There was no devastation and sorrow and horror and, you know, desolation. He met, you know, the earth in that state of void and emptiness and darkness. But once God was part of it, that that's, an, I mean, we should probably use that as our basis of what God builds and why we should, you know. But creation story is an amazing thing because out of nothing, God created wonderful, amazing, beautiful things and life continued. He didn't have to do it again. It's been going on since then. That's why he put um, Noah and his family and the animals in the, in the ark was because... The breath that he gave man in the very beginning was still going. The breath that the animals had because of him was still going. He didn't have to redo it again. That's why he kept them. It's like, look, that same life is still life. I recognize that life. It's my life. The breath that is in you right now, Noah. So I'm just going to, I'm going to continue the earth with you and your family because my life is in you. So let us go forward, continuing into 2022, being built by God in preservation from the flood in protection from the things that are out there you know being safe and have understanding that god is our refuge psalm 46 or oh, i should, should have gone there psalm 46 the lord is my refuge is that no 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 hold on psalm 46 it's actually like the whole chapter or i said the video was going to be long god is my refuge and strength a very present help in trouble Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled through the mountains, though the mountains shake and the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. 
God shall help her and that right early. I just like that because it says God is our refuge. He's our refuge when, just like the people on the ark, he will, he showed himself to be their refuge because he protected them, he preserved them, and now he promised life. As long as you're in the ark, you have life. As long as you're in the ark. And we know that when Jesus Christ talked about the house and the rock, that rock was a revelation that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He has come to save, he's come to deliver, to heal, everything that you need to, you know, and that's how, oh, the video is getting long, right? But that is how we are preserved and that's how we are protected and that's how he is our refuge is that we hold on to the name of Jesus when we're in those storms. You believe in the name of Jesus. You believe in his power to save when you're in that storm. You believe in the word of God, which is which are words of life when you're in those storms, when you're living life and things just start happening. And even before then, prepping yourself, right? Noah didn't build when the flood started. He started building before the flood happened and was prepared. So we too can equip ourselves with the word of God. Jesus Christ says it's the spirit and life. Let us really hold on to that. Like it's the word is spirit and life. Then let us be building ourselves up with the word so that when the flood comes, we're already like coated and sealed and cannot penetrate. All right. That's that's the end for today. I'll be back. We'll be back next time. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. And remember, God gives life when you're in, in the ark. All right. And that's why he builds so that you can have life and life more abundantly. Okay. All right. God bless you. Bye. See you next time.